Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today we are making a magic iris birthday bubble surprise. <laughs> I'll be using bubbles of joy and scripty bubble sentiments, a magic iris, and three rings there, and the three sausage pieces, the blades, three brackets, the handle, and the magic iris add on and the tab for that. So I'm going to start by stamping out my scene. I'm placing these stamps where I want them. And this little guy is going to have the bubble wand and a bottle of bubbles. And on the inside, his friend is going to be caught up on top of a bubble. <laughs> So I want to see where they're all going to go, and I want this little secondary sentiment under the happy, so I want to make sure that I've got enough room for that. So I'm just taking each of the stamps and using some jellyfish ink and stamping them down. Now they're not so easy to see right now, but you will see. <laughs> we'll get to that. But just wanting to make sure I've got them all stamped on there. and. I'm putting this little mouse separate so that I don't get his tail on my main card. And then once I have the happy stamped down, I'm going to stamp those images again on some full sticky post-it notes. And so I'm using River Rock ink here. You can use any ink just so long as it doesn't smear while you're ink blending. Uh, so you might want to test that out first. But getting my images stamped down and then I'm going to fussy cut those out. Now I don't need to cut out the tails because it's just a line and so uh, it makes it pretty simple then. It's it's not they're not too tough to cut out but I will say when you're cutting from the inside you make a little hole and then come from the back of it and and cut out the insides. It's nicer to do it without the entire thing cut out because you have a little bit more uh, stability while you're cutting those little areas. All right, just placing everything onto the panel over where I had stamped. And this way I can ink blend the background and not have to uh, color around these images. I can just ink that all up and then come back and color my images afterwards. All right, getting everything pressed down so that the ink won't go underneath. And I'm prepping it now with an anti-static bag and I'm using some clear ink and I'm going to put the second part of that sentiment on. I'm gonna white heat emboss it. So I'm stamping that and then I'll use my white embossing powder, sprinkle that on and then make sure that I don't have any little specks left anywhere. And then I heat that up off camera with my heat gun. Now instead of stamping the bubbles, I thought what I could do is take the coordinating dies for those bubbles and just use those instead of stamping. So I die cut those out of that same full stick post-it note and I'm placing them where I think I want them. I want the bubbles to kind of flow from the wand up towards the happy. Now, this is the Slimline Simple Hillside Stencil. It's going to give me a subtle slope to the ground. This is Salty Ocean Distress Ink. And with a life-changing blending brush, I am just going to ink blood all around the card panel. Now, I sped this up quite a bit. Uh, I don't think I'd win a competition in speed blending. So I thought I'd just give you a, a quick run through. And once I have the panel the way I want it, then I make sure to get the little center as well. And then I'm going to take off the bubble masks, just the bubble ones, because I want to ink blend over those as well. Just a little lighter than the background, but that way it will have that same color in the bubbles 
as the sky itself. So I want to keep the bubble wand mask, but I am going to take off the bubble part of the wand and that'll get inked with the other bubbles. I'm using Distress Ink, not Distress Oxide for this because I know that I can still use my Copic markers over the top of the ink and it's not going to affect my markers at all or react with the ink like a water-based marker would do. I'll ink up the big bubble that the mouse is on just the same and now I can put the ground together. So this is Mode Lawn Distress Ink and I'm taking that same slimline simple hillside stencil and I made sure that it was at the same place. There are grid lines on the stencil so it's easy to line them up and now I'm just ink blending again <laughs> in speed time and I'm going to keep the ground pretty simple because all of the interest is going to be up at top. So I just wiped the ink off of my heat embossed sentiment and I can start to color in those bubbles. So right now I'm using a B quadruple zero and shading in like a C shape, just on one side, trying to get the shape in there and decided to go darker, but a little narrower with the B zero zero, just to give it the look of kind of a shadow at the bottom of the bubbles. And with the uh, scripty bubble word, trying to figure out where I think that that is. And I'm not going to be uh, as specific on that one. But now that there's a shadow on the one side, I want to kind of reflect that on the other side of the bubble with a smaller little mark and make sure to hit the larger bubble as well. All right, now that I have that kind of mapped out, I'm using a BV20. It's kind of a gray blue violet. And I'm adding some more to the to the base, kind of more shadow there. I want it to stand out from the sky so it doesn't get too blended together, so it's it's not kind of washed out. So adding, I'll be adding a, a lot of color, but just to make sure that we've got a definite shadow to it. All right, this is an RV triple zero and an RV00. They're doing the same thing that I did with the blue, but I'm putting more color on the upper right with the pink. But I decided to go darker. This is an RV13, and I'm not worried about being too dark because I want something dark enough that when I go over it with my white gel pen, the white really shows up. So it's okay to have it uh, a little brighter, a little darker. Um, any bright colors would would work fine. I uh, chose this kind of pink, purple, blue combination, but you could put green in there, um, oranges, anything you want, kind of that iridescent look. Uh, many times I just uh, look at bubbles. I'll look at real pictures of real bubbles and I like to look at cartoon images of bubbles and then just play around with it. So here I'm coming in with that V04 and getting a, a very thin line on the top left and I actually will come back later and reinforce that line a little bit more. Some of the lines I'm leaving, some I am blending in with uh, a lighter color just kind of to soften it up but a combination of both so here's that big bubble everything's just a little bit more pronounced on the big bubble and I am softening this one up with the B00 anytime I make a prominent line on one side I, I like to put a little bit of a reflection like it's going through the bubble on the other I'm adding a faint blue-green color now, which is going to cover more of the bubble. So blending into the center. Now, there are many ways to create bubbles, too. I mean, they could really reflect what's going on around them, like with big reflection marks in them, or use colored cardstock to give it a different look, using something opaque like colored pencil. Well, now that I blended all that in with the blue, it's time to get a little bit more of the BV20 to make that line a bit more prominent. 
a nice thing too is it's pretty forgiving. I mean, I'm kind of making this line on the big bubble a bit thick, but once I come in with the white gel pen, I can just cover that up and it won't be a problem. So these bubbles have a combination of kind of a white rim around the edges and color showing uh, kind of as an inner circle and then some bright white highlights on them. Now that the bubbles are complete, we can start with some no line coloring and I'm not going to show all of the images. We would be here for a long time. So I'm going to focus on that little mouse floating on the bubble. I'm starting by touching up the outer part of the image. So anything that was not ink blended right to the edges, just to give him a little better definition. And I'll come in with a C1 and find the lines that I want to be dark that are from the image. So the inner ears and under the chin. So also starting to map out the shading and that will begin defining the contours of the image. I have to say, I think this has got to be my new favorite little mouse. <laughs> he is so, oh, he's adorable. I think he could sit on top of a lot of different things, maybe on top of a word that was uh, a little larger, like that was spelled out with Oliver's stitched ABCs, or maybe he could be on a piece of cheese. <laughs> I don't know. He just, he, he looks like he could be up to no good in a lot of different places. All right, so I'm just, I, I tried my C2 and it's a little sticky. I have to replace the nib on that one. So I went straight to the C3, which is a bit darker and going in the same areas that I put the C1. Uh, it kind of gives me that confidence that that's where I want my shadows and and I can add those now with this C3 and then I'll blend that in start blending things with the C1. Lawn Fawn's Jellyfish ink makes it really easy to do no line coloring. I don't feel like I have to try to blend into lines that are are faint from uh, some kind of color that I tried to stamp with. I, I really no, don't have to focus on that at all. I can just act as though there are no lines. That's especially helpful with a whiter or lighter image like this where the area that has the light source, so in this case my upper right, I don't have to try to blend in from a line of gray that I would have had on that side. And so I can just focus on getting the, the shading the way I want it without having to work that into the process. I'm using a W uh, as well as a C, so the warm grays as well as cool grays. I like the combination that it gives. It gives a little bit more variation in his fur. So he'll be mostly cool gray, but a little warm gray in there as well and I used the RV10 to give him a pink nose and those pink ears. Now with the C00, just doing some final blending to make sure he's all uh, blended straight out, but then I wanna make sure to have things still well-defined. Using that C1 to find anything that I felt like needed a little more definition, maybe it was blended away too much and make sure that his features like his nose and his eyes are prominent. And with the coloring all done, it's time to start putting this magic iris together. I like to ink blend the centers of my rings just so that if you see them from the outside, they are the same color as the panel, all three of them. And then I will also ink blend that pull tab, but I'm going to leave out the arrow because I want that to be white. And it's time to ink blend these blades or the sausage pieces. <laughs> I put the masks that I used from the main panel onto the blades so that I would have bubbles on the mechanism when it's closed. And now I can put them all together. One of the rings was die cut with the 
little tab openings and that's where the blades are going to go but first I want to put a little ink on those bubbles too just like I did on the front panel and now I can add my blades each one tucks into the slot and they hug around the ring so making sure that they all line up and then I'm going to use a mini glue dot on each one of those blades and there is a little X that is at the top right there on each blade and that's where those glue dots go. Make sure everything's lined up and then I will place a ring on top of that. I'll make sure that it's secured with those glue dots and then I'm going to flip it over and find the guides that tell me where to put my adhesive Put that on and then put a bracket on each of those going out from the center. And then once I have those three brackets on, I can flip it back over and I'll put the handle on there. Now I'm using some of Lawn Fawn's double-sided tape for this because I find that people get pretty enthusiastic when they are, all right, I get pretty enthusiastic when I am opening and closing that magic iris. So I want to make sure that that handle doesn't go anywhere. Now I can add the top ring and then put adhesive on the brackets and fold it over. And I'm not going all the way to the edge this time with those brackets, just about um, oh, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch from the stitched line on the circle and that gives me enough room to move the mechanism. So there it is closed and open. All right, I'm gonna color those bubbles the exact same way that I colored the ones on the panel. Finish up with some white gel pen, and then I'm gonna use that double-sided tape on the top of this. I'm gonna put it everywhere. Uh, you can use any adhesive for that. I just, I again, I don't want it to go anywhere. And I'm using double-sided tape on that pull tab as well. That will do double duty because I can just add that arrow right on top of that. And so there's my pull tab and add that little arrow inside. And then I'll clip off the excess of that handle. So now it will match up with my panel. Take off all that release paper and then I will line up my panel on top of that so that the center is showing through just right and also that tab is flush with the panel there. All right, now that I have that ready and it opens just fine, it's time to put this card together. I cut a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel out of one of my latest favorite card stocks. This is from the Texture Dot Gemstone Pack, and that plum color is fantastic. So uh, I'm just going to put some foam adhesive on my panel on the back of it, just in the corners and on the long sides in the center so that it doesn't get in the way of the mechanism opening. And I'll put some adhesive on each of those brackets and I'm going to figure out where that center piece should go. And so I've got some adhesive on the back of that. And I'm lining it up through the hole and I'll place down that little center piece first and then take off the release paper and then I can line this up right in the center, make sure that my circle is right where it should be and press it down. So here it is closed and open. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and as I was opening and closing this, I realized I think I could go a little brighter with some of the colors. So with that V04, brighten that up kind of to match the background, that beautiful plum paper. And then I also decided that I need a shadow for the, the little guy on the on the bottom and his bubbles. So that's a YG63. And since my light source is coming from the upper right, I want that shadow to kind of follow that same way to the bottom left. And I'm just making sure that I've connected it to the feet and the bubble 
container because they are grounded. They're on the ground. And then I'm just going to come in with a C1 and dull that down even a little bit more. And I can't forget to add the little mouse's tail. <laughs> I almost forgot. But this is a C3 and I'm adding in that tail. And I think it's a little dark when I look at it. So one way to lighten that up without getting uh, everything blended around is just to take a colored pencil and color over the top of it. Just dulled it down a little bit. This is a, a light French gray. And then also to add a little more definition, now that I have some brighter colors in there, I wanted to just make sure that he wasn't blended out, that he popped as well, then uh, just adding some of those details with a colored pencil. And this is a, uh, I think it's a cool gray, uh, and then blending those in a little bit. So one was 90% and one is, and this one is 70%. And these are uh, Prismacolor pencils. Define his facial features just a little bit more and then this little guy is all set. I hope you enjoyed the video today and that it inspired you to color up some bubbles or try some no line coloring. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!